schools will begin to close tomorrow at 6 p.m. in the eastern U.S., but final results could take days to determine in some races. Here to discuss the indicators of what they'll be on the lookout for are Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report with Amy Walter and Tamara Keith of NPR. Hello to both of you. You can feel it. It's in the air. It's almost here. It's almost here. <laughs> what we've been talking about for a long time. So speaking of the Cook Political Report, Amy, with Thank Amy you. Walter, um, your House forecast for the House of Representatives suggests that Republicans are favored in 212 races. You need 218 right. to take control. Explain what you're seeing. Well, what we're seeing right now, look, the challenge for Democrats all along has been the fact that they have the narrowest of majorities. They only currently have a five-seat majority. So it's not going to take much of a wave, a ripple among uh, this electorate to give Republicans the majority. What Republicans are seeing, they say, they see a big wave that's about to crash to shore, mm -hmm. both in the Senate and in the House. What we're seeing is one that is maybe like, I don't know what we're going to call it, wave E, but maybe not a tsunami type wave, where Republicans pick up 15, maybe 30 seats, um, depending on just a number of key factors. One, who comes out, that's always important, but mm -hmm. critically, who comes out on election day? Democrats feel p pretty good about their early voting in some of these key states, but we know, especially in these last couple of years, where Republicans turn out is on election day, and they often surprise Democrats who assumed they'd built a big enough lead. Um, and then the second uh, thing we're looking at is where independent voters decide to go. We're going to be looking, you talked to Julie Pace about the um, AP uh, on election night. I'm going to be looking very closely at where those independent voters decide to go on election day. When there's a big wave election, they tend to break by double digits for the party that's not in the White House. If it's a smaller margin, then we may see fewer seats. But right now, the expectation that we have is it's going to be anywhere from let's say, a 10 to 15, maybe 20-seat uh, majority for Republicans in the next Congress. Yeah, and, and again, all they need is five, but That's right. the numbers you're seeing are, That's right. are clearly giving them Giving the them at least, at least that number. So, it, Tam, how much difference does it make for Republicans, whether they have a little bit of an advantage or a much bigger one? Well, when it comes to governance, the bigger the majority, the better in terms of actually being able to get their agenda through. Uh, one of the challenges that a, a potential likely speaker, Kevin McCarthy, would face is actually governing. Um, and there are must-pass bills that um, will be challenging to pass because there are Republicans who have never voted for a budget, for instance. Mm. Um, and, and they've had to have, um, in the past, when Republicans have been in power and, and a Democrat has been in the White House, they've had to rely on Democrats to help them get things across the line. How many Democrats will they be able to get? Will, they, will uh, a, a Republican majority of this variety be willing to uh, pass uh, a budget bill, for instance? Um, or will they, uh, you know, want to extract huge concessions mm -hmm. from, from the president and his party? Um, so it could be very challenging because there really truly are a lot of Republicans who, who are in the always no caucus. Well, there, and then there are the people in the vote no, pray yes category, <laughs> yes, as one many Republican, <laughs> many called them, that they have to do it for optics reasons. But you know what, Judy, even a bigger majority for Republicans does have some problems for Kevin McCarthy because many of those Demo uh, many of those Republicans would be holding Democratic seats. Some of the, you know, if we're talking about a wave, that means that Republicans are picking up seats in Connecticut and Rhode Island and California and Oregon. Seats that Biden won by double digits in the last election, they'll have a really hard time holding those in 24 if those candidates are labeled as, right, the, or, and Republicans are labeled as the party that went too far to the extreme or the party that didn't vote for a budget or to uh, default on the debt ceiling. Or right. were big fans of a former president, right. Donald and Trump. What we do know they'll be able to accomplish is investigations. Yes. And, and they have lots of plans to investigate yes. lots of things, potentially to embark on uh, impeachments of various Biden administration officials. Uh, that part would be relatively easy. They can probably get good consensus on that. So then there is the Senate. Uh, yes. I remember that other uh, body the other of the Congress. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at the Cook uh, political report. Four states in toss-up. Uh, talk just a little bit about why they're there. Um, when we say toss-up, we mean these are races that we really feel could go either way. These are 
these are coin toss type races where just the narrowest of margins separating uh, d Democrats from Republicans. What we do know historically, when we look back at ratings we've made over the years, they tend to break disproportionately in one direction. So you look at four seats, you say, okay, Democrats win two, Republicans win two, boom, here we go, we're basically back where we started. Usually, though, they break three or four of them will break one way or the other, again, traditionally. As we've been discussing, though, especially Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, those are states where we expect to not have an answer on election night. Georgia going to a runoff, both sides seem to agree that that race is going to go into extra time. And Pennsylvania, uh, Republicans feeling a lot better about their candidate there. Feels like mm -hmm. he's kind of gotten the late momentum in that election. You've it's, colored it red. It, here. You've colored it red because <laughs> it's a Republican leaning yeah, state. Right. That's the state on election night, Judy. If they call it for Republicans, there's a very good chance that Republicans will have enough to win the majority. I would. Um, posit that. If Democrats hold it, doesn't mean they're holding the majority, but it does mean that they could keep a 50-50 Senate. And, and Tam, the same kind of question that I asked you about the House, how much difference does it make for Republicans, whether they stay at 50-50 or they do have that one or more seat advantage? I mean, it certainly, it would be helpful to them to truly <laughs> have the majority. Yes. Right. Um, and again, I think that in terms of governing, this is going to be, you know, if this goes the way that it looks like it's going, it is going to be two years of divided government uh, where the president has a veto. Nobody has enough of a majority to override a veto. And, um, and, there, and there's just a lot of gridlock, which um, is not what anyone wants. And yet the American people, um, on a very regular basis, give America divided government. <laughs> And, and say that that's what they want. I mean, when you when you ask people in a, in a number of these polls, they say they feel better. With or the that the, this they idea that they want to check on, check. The, on yeah. the party in power. But the one thing that we do know also about 2023 is that we'll be talking a lot about 2024. Yes. <laughs> and yes. the likelihood that uh, Donald Trump will once again be a big part of the conversation. But Democrats are also talking a lot about what is Joe Biden going to do? Will he yes. announce immediately he's running for re-election? What kind of um, signals is he going to be giving? And we are hearing signals from the White House that he has every intention, Absolutely. but they can't say it because there are legal things that happen Absolutely. once he does. Uh, but Tam, um, it, it, you're right. I mean, 2023 is going to be about 2024. Oh, indeed. I, uh, 2022, in a lot of ways, is already <laughs> about 2024. Yeah, uh, I think you know, that's right. just just when we think we're done, we just we we'll just go right into the next one. Any last minute uh, words of, of, of from the wise, I should say from the wise, not to the wise here, about what you're watching for tomorrow night? What might surprise us tomorrow night? Um, I'm quickly. watching New Hampshire. That's yes. a state that it should stay, given all that we've seen. Republicans, um, would that would be a big upset. If they win in that Senate race, I think we're looking at a big night for Republicans. Yes. I agree with Amy. <laughs> okay. I'm watching New Hampshire, too, and some House races in Virginia that should come in early and give us a good sense. Well, we always watch the two of you, and I should say tomorrow night, uh, Tam, you are going to be working hard with NPR covering this election. Amy, you're going to be here at this desk Very with us as we watch yes. the results come in. Thank you both. And a reminder to you, our viewers, that we will have the latest election news tomorrow right here on the news hour and all night on PBS with our special election coverage.